Every year in the early spring, I go to my favorite river to look for fish that are spawning in the shallow water near shore. Because at this time of year, the males are at their most colorful as they try to impress the females with bold patterns and bright colors that they don't have at other times of the year. So it's a perfect time to get in the water and film the fish. But fish aren't the only animals that use these shallow waters for breeding. These are American toads, and they're right in the middle of laying their eggs. The large toad standing on its back legs is the female, and the smaller toad holding on to her is the male. And in the early spring, when the air temperatures rise into the low 70s, they'll travel overland to rivers, lakes, and ponds to breed. The males typically arrive at the river first and then begin singing to the females so that they'll join them in the shallow water near the shore. And once a male has found a female, he climbs on her back in a breeding embrace that's known as amplexus, and they can remain in this position for several hours. The female lays her eggs and the male fertilizes them externally as they're released. The eggs are laid in two long strings because the female has two ovaries, so there's one string of eggs for each one of her ovaries. And some large American toads have been known to lay as many as 20,000 eggs in a single spawn. The eggs are covered in a thin, jelly-like substance that expands after it comes into contact with the water. This gelatinous coating on the eggs is sticky, so sand, silt, and other debris sticks to the eggs and helps keep them hidden from predators. Nonetheless, the toad's eggs are toxic, so most creatures leave them alone. The eggs are half white and half black. The white side of the egg is where the embryo will form and the black side of the egg is where the yolk is. These toads can remain underwater for up to half an hour before they need to surface for air, but it really depends on their activity level while submerged. The more active they are, the more frequently they'll need to surface to take a breath. And it's the female that does all of the work, moving around and surfacing for air, while the male just tries his best to hang on so he doesn't lose his spot to another male toad. Because competition for the female toads can get quite intense, so once a male locates a female, he's not very likely to let go of her anytime soon. And here comes a male toad right now, looking for a female to mate with. Nonetheless, there are more males than females at the breeding site, so there's a lot of competition between the males for a chance to mate. And you'll sometimes see a female carrying several males on her back, all fighting for a chance to mate with her. And in some cases, there's such a shortage of females that a whole group of desperate males will climb onto a single female and overpower her to the point where she can no longer surface to take a breath. And I think we all know how that turns out for the female. So once a male finds a mate, he holds on to her as if his life depends on it, because other males will try and remove him if they can. Okay, moving on. Up to this point, we haven't seen the moment when the eggs are released by the female and fertilized by the male, so let's take a look at that now. I've paused the video here so that I can explain what you're about to see next.
In just a moment, both of these toads will change their positions. The female will arch her back by lifting up the front of her body, and at the same time, the male will bring in his back legs behind the female so that they form a basket to catch the eggs. This cradling of the eggs by the male's back legs concentrates them in back of his vent where he will be releasing his sperm, which makes fertilization of the eggs much more effective. All right, let's start the video back up again and watch as the female releases her eggs while the male fertilizes them. She arches her back, then the male brings in his back legs and starts fertilizing the eggs. Unfortunately, as I moved around to the back of the toads to film the cluster of eggs caught by the male's legs, I positioned the camera too high to capture what I was after. Here you can see how the male has brought in his back legs to catch the eggs as they're released by the female. Here's another angle showing the cluster of eggs caught by the male's legs. And now, after all of that hard work, the female swims to the surface to take a breath with the male still holding on as tight as he can. And here's another pair of toads about to lay eggs. And once again, the female arches her back just before she releases the eggs, which I think is a signal telling the male to bring in his back legs to catch the eggs and begin fertilizing them. By the way, this toad can't feed while it's underwater, so those black-nosed dace that you see swimming around are in no danger of being eaten by the toad. Still, he sure looks menacing as he sits at the bottom of the stream waiting for a mate, but he's fairly harmless unless a really big fish makes the mistake of trying to eat him. And in just a moment, you'll see my favorite fish in the river. And there it is. It's a baby tessellated darter. These bottom-dwelling fish can grow to a length of about 3 inches or nearly 8 centimeters and lay their eggs on the undersides of rocks and logs. The males are very nice-looking fish during the breeding season. The little creature seen here is a caddisfly nymph. And these little guys create a protective coating around themselves by gluing tiny bits of sticks and bark to the outside of their bodies. Trout love these little nymphs and will pick these things apart to get at the tasty little insect hidden inside. Nonetheless, I'm sure everyone has noticed by now that these toads have a lot of different color variations. In fact, all four of the toads that you see here are a different color, and that toad couple on the left is especially attractive, and I'm sure that they'll make some really beautiful little baby toads. By the way, these American toads typically reach a length of around 3 inches, but I've seen ones bigger than that. As you can see, these toads have been very busy breeding, and they've spread their eggs all over the riverbed. The toad eggs have now hatched into what are commonly known as tadpoles, but some people call them polywogs. These tadpoles are at a similar developmental stage as a fish wriggler. They're still absorbing the last bits of their yolk sac, and they can't swim, but they do wriggle occasionally, just like a baby fish in the wriggler stage. And just like the eggs, these tadpoles are toxic, so most things won't try to eat them.
But there are exceptions, because this crayfish eats both the eggs and the tadpoles, so it's a good thing that the female toads can lay so many eggs. The tadpoles are considerably darker now, and they seem to be moving around a bit more as well. There are thousands of them along the riverbed, and they seem to gather in the same areas. They could be doing that on their own, or it could be due to the influence of the current. The little tadpoles are now free swimming and beginning to feed. They'll eat algae, diatoms, various biofilms, and soft plant leaves. But very few of them will survive beyond the tadpole stage, and those that do manage to eventually grow legs and leave the river will still have a long journey ahead of them, with little chance of surviving to become breeding adults. But those that do survive will return to the water when they're ready to reproduce. And once again, I'll be there at the river's edge to see if I can learn something new. And that brings us to the end of another journey. Thanks for joining me, and I really hope that you have a beautiful day.